Now, foreign ministers from around the world will attend the G20 summit, which is taking place in India's national capital, New Delhi. The two-day summit, starting from today, is taking place in the shadow of Russia's war in Ukraine and the spiraling U.S.-China tensions. The foreign ministers of member nations have started arriving in New Delhi to attend the meet. Russia's foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, arrived in New Delhi for G20 foreign ministers meeting. He will also be attending the Raisina Dialogue 2023. The Russian Foreign Ministry released a statement before Lavrov's visit to New Delhi which said, and I'm quoting here, we support India's G20 presidency and its commitment to promote a unifying agenda that will restore confidence in multilateral diplomacy and prevent fragmentation of the global economy. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken will be reaching New Delhi later today as well. According to U.S. top officials, Blinken will underscore the damage that Russia's war of aggression has caused and further urge nations to redouble calls for Russia to end the war. Besides Lavrov, the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs Under Secretary has also arrived in New Delhi. Taking to Twitter, the Indian Ministry of External Affairs spokesperson Arindam Bakchi said that the arrivals for the first G20 India Foreign Ministers meeting have begun. Indian External Affairs Minister Dr. S.J. Shankar also announced the arrival of Turkey's Foreign Minister to India. Both the ministers discussed bilateral relations on the sidelines of the G20 foreign ministers meeting. Taking to Twitter, Turkish foreign minister said that he met with India's external affairs minister and had thanked him for Operation Dost, which is the search and rescue operation initiated by India for the earthquake hit Turkey and Syria. A meeting of foreign ministers of the Quad countries, that is the United States, India, Australia and Japan is also scheduled to be held on the sidelines of the G20 foreign ministers meet. Now for more on this, our principal diplomatic correspondent Siddhant Sibbal has sent us this report. Listen in. Delhi from today will be the global diplomatic capital for two days as the foreign ministers of the 20 countries who are part of the G20 grouping will take part in the foreign ministers meeting. Now India has also invited other countries as well and focus will be reforming of multilateral institutions like the UN counter-terrorism, global scale mapping, development cooperation, food uh, and security issues as well. But essentially, we know that uh, the Russia-Ukraine conflict is going to dominate the agenda. We know that uh, at the finance minister's meeting in Bangalore, there was no joint communique because of the divide between West and Russia, supported by China over certain paragraphs. And India issued uh, uh, a chair a statement. Now, uh, we know that India plays an important part as a host of the grouping and it's up to India how it is able to bridge the divide between the two sides. But essentially, India will be also being uh, the voice of the Global South, uh, will focus on how issues and out uh, impacts of the conflict like price price can be discussed and raised and perhaps a solution can be provided on them. With video journalist Chandrasekhar Sudhan Sibbal for Vion in New Delhi. Now for more on this, we're joined by Atman Trivedi, who is the Senior Vice President of Albright Stonebridge Group, as well as Senior Fellow at Atlantic Council. Thank you so much for joining us on this broadcast. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Like I mentioned, two-day sum uh, summit starting today. It's taking place in the shadow of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, as well as growing U.S.-China tensions. What do you think are going to be some of the key issues on the agenda for this meet? Well, I think as uh, uh, Sidon Sibyl previewed, the Ukraine-Russia conflict is, is really going to take center stage. Um, it, as, as you noted um, earlier, the, uh, the, the situation there uh, between Ukraine and Russia uh, really hampered uh, the ability to arrive at a consensus at uh, the finance minister's meeting that took place in Bangalore last week. Uh, these issues are front and center as we get to the one year uh, plus anniversary of uh, the Ukraine-Russia conflict. And uh, so much remains unsettled. Uh, it seems like uh, the, the conflict uh, has no end in sight as uh, neither seems able to achieve its objectives 
but neither side seems exhausted. So India's challenge will be uh, to uh, not have that conflict really take up all the oxygen in the room uh, when the foreign ministers uh, uh, convene. Right, absolutely. In fact, I was just going to come to this, that India's position through this invasion has been very clear. What sort of challenges do you think India will face? India is going to get pulled in a number of different directions. Uh, India has tried to uh, take a very careful, um, uh, restrained uh, position um, and not align itself uh, with the West necessarily, but also not align itself with Russia. And uh, India finds itself caught uh, uh, between the two uh, poles in this conflict and uh, its own interests may uh, dictate in favor of taking, trying to continue taking this neutral approach. Uh, but the question is, will it be able to sustain it given all of the pressure that's being applied by various sides, uh, most, most strongly coming from the West? Right, absolutely. And of course, I mentioned this earlier, a meeting of foreign ministers of the Quad countries is also expected to take place on the sidelines. What are some of the other global issues that are likely to feature in these discussions? I think China will uh, be in the elephant in the room when the Quad countries get together. Uh, U.S.-China tensions within the Quad are uh, nearing uh, an all-time high, uh, not seen over the last four plus decades. Uh, the, the balloon incident near the US uh, combined with um, Chinese hints that they may uh, arm uh, Russia uh, with lethal weaponry against Ukraine uh, has raised tensions. At the same time, India's uh, uh, longstanding border issues uh, remain uh, generally unresolved. Uh, there was that troubling uh, incident uh, where there appeared to have been violent clashes at the end of last year uh, in the high Himalayas. And so China will feature prominently. And so that will take us into a conversation on critical and emerging technologies, uh, right. green infrastructure development, uh, and, and ways to um, uh, address uh, China's threat in uh, maritime domain, uh, the Indian Ocean, as well as the South China Sea. Right. Ms. Atmant Reddy, thank you so much for joining us on this podcast with all your insights on this. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.